So we got to see our very first um, non night raid Taigu user in the show. And um, so, so I have to ask, well, Mike has probably seen it too. Is it as much as the evil looking um, All Might <laughs> doppelganger? It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's at least close. <laughs> Oh, yeah. In the head, it's real bad. And I didn't realize it until after Crow said it when I watched it with him. And I was like, you know, you got a point. <laughs> it's legit. It's like all my bro evil. <laughs> so I was, I was just like, is this kind of like a video of all my train to murder Deku? <laughs> <was on> <laughs> it's like, kind of like, yeah, it is what it is. What it is. But uh, all right. So. We're starting to learn a little bit more about the characters, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But I guess I should ask a couple favorite moments, stuff like that. Um, so you could go ahead first. Um, that whole fight with Amakame and um, Discount All Might. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're actually starting to see to get fights in these. One thing I will say because you have a ca character that can literally kill something in one hit, you don't have a ton of like five minute to 10 minute long fights but when they do them they're awesome also yeah oh yeah yeah something i appreciate mike um i was gonna say the fight too also just just kind of the the exposition dump of of all the imperial arms was very it was meat and potatoes but it was it was good meat and potatoes that was something um oh boy Am I gonna have? Yeah, this a is like don't all that at, at you. That 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 whole spiel you have to remember for later on the show because I'm going to have one of the most. It's not even a mad rant. I just wanted to be a fly a fly on the wall in the room when an imperial arms that gets introduced later is like. So you mean to tell me? This this elderly aged old king that wanted to defend his empire at all stakes made this imperial arms. This old guy did this, and you're gonna see it in like six episodes. Oh so god, it does not take long. They're just like, okay, what was going on? This was made without his knowledge. There's no way he had to pay for this. How how ridiculous is this uh this arms? Um it uh its weapon form is something you could buy in an all-purpose store today okay like i could guarantee you you would know at least 30 people that own what the weapon looks like not what it does but what it looks like hmm. just in your regular everyday life you could walk past 30 people that own this <laughs> is, 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 is it is it as out of place as um Tatsumi's outfit? Yeah. <laughs> Even it's worse. Oh god. It's a, th it's a thousand times worse. <laughs> oh yeah. It's just like where it and, and like it, it it can only be used by the person that has it. It is used by like I mentioned in an earlier episode that there's a borderline persona character that comes in later. They're the one I that was thinking about that, like, yo, where is this persona? <laughs> <laughs> this they come in in like I want to say episode like 10 it's like 10 or 11 it's right around halfway through the show and they just show and they have the most just out of place name ever everything about this character is like where did you come from she fits in perfect but it's like what where did you come from? <laughs> it, it, she's more out of place than Tatsumi is, like look wise, but she fits in better than Tatsumi ever like did at first. <laughs> just like oh, I want to wow. know the thought. I want to know the thought process behind this character. I love this character, but I want to know the thought process. <laughs> so, um, I have to say that the process behind making Imperial Arms, or at least they're called Taigus. I don't know why they changed them, but. It's one of the coolest things that I've seen in an anime so far. Like, they just got a big group of people together and went, go slaughter some stuff, and we're going to make weapons to defend the kingdom. Because I can't do it for forever. Yeah, I, I do I do like that concept. And it's always, yeah. it's always cool when anime um, combines, like, um, living, living organisms with weapons. But not, but not in a creepy way, like Evangelion. 
<laughs> there, there's two. There's like there's two ways that they could do that, and then there's like the middle ground, which I would say Akame is the middle ground. You get the bad end, which is like I should say it's done creepily in Evangelion, and then you get the other end, which is Soul Eater, which is great, but it just makes for some mm. awkward situations. Mm. But it's still good, man. That oh, at some point. I just to see when it falls off the cliff because Mike, you said you have not finished it. At some point, like if we're still doing this, like a year later, I want to do Soul Eater. Oh, we'll we'll, we'll get. I'm sure. We'll I get don't there mind eventually. me watching Soul Eater. I remember why I don't like the anime. All right, then that's the plan. Later on, we are doing Soul Eater because Soul this. Eater. Still, Mike was mentioning earlier that like the not skipping the um intro, like I. I will wholeheartedly say that I will never find an intro that I like more than Sororio Days. But I will wholeheartedly admit that there is no better intro and intro cinematic combo better than the first part of Soul Eater. That thing is off the charts. I, I was going to say, I like... I can't I like, easily I like both. that clip. <laughs> <laughs> I like both Soul Eater openings, but yeah, the first the first one just the first one is good, hits. but like there's other there's better anime opens. There, and like, yeah, yeah. I've not seen all of them, but at the current moment, you've seen a lot more anime than I have. But at the current moment, that's why I like. I will there. easily fight that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I have to ask <laughs> the characters' names in my notes. Oh my gosh! All right, so uh, what out of the now that you've gotten some explanation behind the uh. Uh, imperial arms that are in night raid what is your favorite imperial arms of the night raid users even though you haven't seen cross tail get used really that's like about well outside of like no you did you saw it in that one episode where he slices that chick in the cave uh mike you go first what's your first one your favorite one so far um i think my favorite one um like because of the presentation are the um the I forget what the the string the string one's called. Uh, cross tail. Yeah, cross cross tail is kind of my favorite. It it, it does a lot cooler stuff later on. Love does some ridiculous shit in the fight later in the way ass end of the series. It's great. Miss Al. Um, I like pumpkins because when they explain it, I don't know why the first thing that came to my mind like is this like um from Ruby like Yang and like Adams like set like semblances a bit like. The more indeed than they are, the more like powerful. I suppose she takes more damage than she in does way, more back. Like, it was it's kind of like, like that. One, it was just like my mind says one to that. I was like, is this a ruby discount? <laughs> <laughs> well, to, <laughs> when did I gotta think? When did Ruby came? They would have came out around the same time. Uh, you, yeah. Oh, so man. I was just like, huh. <laughs> yeah, you want to see some? I know Mikami's obviously. I thought like it was interesting. Yeah, so it's like I, like one more in depth with that. Yeah, Akami's is great. And I always love when they bring up that, like, yeah, man, that weapon's got to be great. There, no, there's some real drawbacks. What? I, I can't clean it. <sighs> I swear that was pretty good. <laughs> for, for the record, Ruby came out in 2013, and the manga for Akami Got Kill was 2010. 2010. Okay. Yeah, so right. probably like an inspiration type of There was an inspiration. You want to see some inspiration for Ruby? Watch Soul Eater. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like even the scythe wielder the main death scythe in soul eater voices the the second main <laughs> it's uh scythe user in ruby they're both voiced by mick Min mick Mignana at first and they oh. both have red as a main color yeah but they are used to voice like everything so it's a lot and like i saw soul eater second so i was just watching it through like <laughs> holy crap <laughs> if they're still both good in their own rights that happens a lot so i'm not saying anything either way but uh so we got to see their first fight with an imperial arms user and you got to see the uh uses of it <laughs> and we get to see it. that thing gets used for fan service twice this is the first time but yeah you're getting to see that again just how bad the capital is we're going to have one person do like all of the executions until he's mentally totally unraveled. Yeah. And oh, it's, they do some other stuff with that in the freaking manga. And it's just, 
it's still really good so far. I'm going to keep you guys updated. I can't wait till we get later when stuff starts, quote unquote, changing a little. When stuff the hits thing, the fan. When stuff hits the fan, like, but I will admit, I've gotten to the part where they said stuff changed and the, and the manga is better. I'm just going to throw this out there. Everyone that said the manga was better and that it's trash and this is trash comparatively, oh boy, did you over exaggerate and it is nowhere near as bad as a translation as y'all made it out to be. All they did was not put one arc that was not that great. <laughs> oh, this okay, anime great. is great. This anime right. is great and it is insanely faithful. Y'all can be quiet. <laughs> That's just going to be the end of that conversation. But uh, outside of that, you got to see like the cooking, all that, and then this fight at the end, which I have to, they didn't really mention. Korame at all before this so I just assume both of you are smart enough to realize who Korame is yeah I I, I assumed <laughs> I assume that's who she was from the the brief uh flashback that we saw episodes ago yeah <clears throat> so you guys got to see what Korame looks like now we're gonna do some uh guess guesswork here what did I tell you that Akame means? Um, remind, remind me again. What... Red, red eyes. Oh, okay. You, yeah. you saw Korame's character model. What do you think Korame's name means? <laughs> it means black eyes. Mm. <laughs> they're very creative. They're very on point, and I appreciate it. Because they're two, <laughs> there are two, both two cool names that I'm shocked didn't show up in Ruby somewhere. It's fine. So, I have to ask, were you shocked when she, um, I won't hesitate, bitch, the second Patty came at her as Korame? Um, a little bit. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I know, like, I was like, I know you're excited, but holy fuck. Yeah. That, that, was, that was a bit a bit of a shock but then i realized oh wait that's just her character she would she would she would do whatever is necessary yeah, yeah. there there uh it, it's not going to come to a shock that um the character whose name is in the title of the anime probably has the best story arc in the entire anime but yeah some of the crap that her and cora may down the road <clears throat> do is awesome and oh, are are we going to see more flashbacks? Yeah, you're going to see a lot more. That they, they they flesh out those two. Yeah, they probably get Akame obviously because it's just the head of the again. Her name, t names not a title of the anime, but they get She's a lot supposed more. Supposed to be the main on. character. She is supposed to be the main character. Again, it's one of the most weirdest plot devices ever. We see Akame's point of view through other characters. I I'm having a hard time thinking of another anime that went. She is the main character, but your way of seeing everything of her is through her interactions and how she thought of other people. It's 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 not it's not a bad uh, point of view. It's it's actually kind of a, it's actually kind of refreshing. It is. You have the self insert kind of kind mm. of ish character Tatsumi being the. It's weird. It's hard to describe because I try to describe it to people and I never do a good job of it. But yeah, it's it's good. Um. Yeah, I, 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 it's, we're not in the plot heavy stuff yet. It's, it's going to, at the, like the end of this recording session, most likely it's okay. going to be all a lot more plot to talk heavy. about. Yeah. Right, right to... now it feels like, it feels like we're watching a really good, but still monster of the week kind of anime. Oh yeah. And it becomes, yeah. and it stays that for a while. It because <laughs> it starts to become, oh, cool. That character got introduced. Start the clock. <laughs> <laughs> there, Monster of the Week is very much a thing later on. Is there any sort of questions? Hmm. Whatsoever. If you don't, it's fine, but figure I should ask each time. I think I'm good for now, except um, a quick reminder about um, Kourmet. Are she and Akami are sisters? Yes. Okay. I, yeah. I don't feel I'm spoiling anything if I make that completely known. Yes, they are sisters. 
Anakami is the older one. I don't remember what their age difference is, but yes. <clears throat> and they grew up out of the capital before that whole shindig with her meeting the boss went down, but yeah. Yeah. And there'll be fallout from that later, and it's glorious. <laughs> The show's really good. It's oh, yeah. like, I don't mean it like, I'm one of those people, judging from the fact that I have like over 340 hours in Horizon, I can watch something multiple times and still enjoy it. But I this will be my third time watching Akame the whole way through in less than a year and a half, and I'm still having fun with it. Damn. Like, just for, like I said at the press period I went through, and then I told Crow, and then I went to Mike. I'm like, I know we have some stuff on the list, but for the love of God, can we bump up a comment? He's like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I'm like, it's all yours after that. We're doing that afterwards. But yeah. All right. I guess if you guys don't really have anything else, we can get on to the next one because we're two away from where the second Ooh. bet starts. Ooh. And one Ooh. away one away from where you guys have to lock your answers in oh, for who God. you think Tatsu is like, gonna end I up might with. be jumping ahead, but based on the explanation of what the weapons when they said yeah. like a two Imperial weapons fight, one of them dies, I was just like, this is gonna come up later. And I don't know what to feel about it. Mom pick me up, I'm scared. I love this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh there there's fights later and um we'll see. Because so, they made yeah. sure they specifically said that part and I was just like, I'm fucking dead. Yeah, they, they go out of their way to go some shit's gonna happen and we will get there. I'll just say we will get there. I'm not going to attempt to spoil or classify anything because I want you guys to get this as dry as possible. Outside of the one where I said like with Korame, because that is the you haven't even corked open the barrel yeah, with all that stuff the yet. Surface yet. Yeah, but all right. Mike, where can everybody find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at CaptainK42. You can check out my quick thoughts on letterbox.com slash CoachK42. And you can find me all the various Facebook groups just at my name. You can check out Renegade Pop Culture on Facebook and Twitter at Ren Pop Culture. Look for us on Podchaser. Listen to all of our podcasts on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. <laughs> You can also find us on the Banana Meter website. And, That's a new one. <laughs> and last but not least, everything can be found at renegadepopculture.com. Need an escape? So do we. All right. And Ms. Sal? You can follow me on Twitter at Kiva Love 028 All right. Awesome. And you can find me everywhere at Organoid Zero. Page. This will not matter when this comes out because that game will probably be out for like four months. But man, I can't wait for Horizon Forbidden West. <laughs> All right. We will see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs> Peace.